Okay, what's going on? If it's a rapid starting Big Blue on Bias.com. Thank you to those who've liked, commented, and subscribed. I really appreciate you guys. I read all the comments, the good ones and the bad ones, and I appreciate all of them. It helps the algorithm. So if you guys can comment, whatever it is, I appreciate it. I'm on Telegram and Instagram at Big Blue Unbiased on both of those platforms. Um, actually, I don't know if Telegram even has an at. I just think it's a channel. Uh, soon I will be coming out with a schedule of live streams. So I'll have a certain date. Well, I will have a live stream. Hopefully every single week it'll be the same day. I'll update you in the next week or so about that. I love the live streams. Love interacting with you guys. You guys can throw out different topics, questions, and whatnot. And we can go back and forth and talk about Giants football, especially with the draft. The draft is approaching very quickly within the next month or so. And as I, uh, as I mentioned in my video two videos ago about what the Giants could do in the first round, I think that they have a ton of leverage in the first round. They're really in a nice spot because I think they could trade that pick for a team that's looking to take a quarterback in that area. I think there are going to be some quarterbacks that maybe a team doesn't want to take second, third, fourth overall, but they'll take them at 10, 11, 12. The Giants have the 11th pick. And I think they're in a really nice spot. They could take best player available, whoever they, they feel is the best player left in the draft at that point, or they can go ahead and potentially trade it and get a pretty nice return for a team that's looking to trade up and take a quarterback. So that's that. Okay, so the Giants signed Danny Shelton today, interior defensive lineman. Detroit Lions last season, he's only played um, more than 50% of his snaps once. Only once over the course of his career, former first-round pick, 2015. So... He only has 18 quarterback hits over the course of his career. He's not a, a, a good pass rushing interior defensive lineman, which should make you appreciate Leonard Williams even more and really make you appreciate that trade. And I don't think people really understood the, the true impact of trading for Leonard Williams. It's an absolute steal. Even now, I know people say, well, is there going to be a free agent at the end of the year? Who cares? You got a guy who's one of the best pass rushing interior defensive linemen in the NFL. And it's tough to find those guys. You, it, you just don't find them very often. And he can stop the run, and he can rush the passer. He had over 40 pressures last season. So you look at a player like Shelton, who's talented, former first-round pick, but he has 18 quarterback hits since he's been drafted. Yeah, okay, so he's not going to rush the passer. He's not going to give you much there, but he's a good run-defending interior defensive lineman. Last season, he had 14 run stops, which is essentially a pro football focus stat that tells you that you're good at the you you're either depending on your run stop percentage but a run stop is essentially creating a loss for the opposing offense on a tackle that's kind of their definition of a run stop he had 14 the league leader in among defensive linemen interior defensive linemen 33 okay and Dexter Lawrence actually had 26 so he was one of the better run stuffing defensive tackles in the NFL and Dalvin Tomlinson at 22 and that's essentially who Danny Shelton is replacing Danny Sheldon's not as good as Dalvin, uh, but for a much cheaper price, you get a player that has a similar style of game. The year before that, Danny Shelton had 21 run stops, the league leader at 32 that year. So he's proven to be a good run defending defensive tackle, interior defensive lineman, whatever you want to call it. So that's kind of what you get with Danny Shelton. Uh, last season, played 44% of snaps for the Lions. At most, he played, I think, 67% of snaps uh, in a season. But that's the only time that he ever played over 50%, which kind of fits into what the Giants are doing anyway. You're not going to expect him to start. You're just going to expect him to, you know, situationally play when they think that uh, another team may be running the football. You put him in there. And hopefully he clogs up the opposing team's uh, ability to run the football. Now, the Giants, I still think they could go ahead in these first two or three rounds and draft an interior defensive lineman and add another player to their rotation. I think they'll be fine at edge rusher, especially with Afadi Aden Adenabo, the addition from the Vikings. But a lot of people still think the Giants should even go in the first round with an edge rusher. Fair enough. I understand. More pass rushers, the better, right? But I think Patrick Graham knows how to mix up a pass rush. He knows how to create a pass rush. So I don't think that they need, like that is that is one of their top priorities. I understand that people believe that, but I think they could get away uh, with maybe just taking an edge rusher in the fourth round or something, a little bit later, mid to late round part of the draft, and just be fine. I, I They really impressed me last season when it came to uh, – just piecing together a pass rush with their edge rusher, Sheard, Fackrell, Lalos, 
a lot of guys stepped up and they were 10th in pressure percentage as a team. What I think they should really do is just be absolutely dominant on the defensive line. Leonard Williams, you know what you're going to get out of him. Dexter Lawrence, another good player. B.J. Hill, I think, is a good rotational piece. If they used, let's say, a second-round pick on an interior defensive lineman with really high pass-rushing upside, all of a sudden, they could really dominate the line of scrimmage and make it much easier for their edge rushers, whoever they throw out there. I think Zimenez and Carter are going to be a really nice duo, a Denebo, and let's just say they had another edge rusher in the fourth, fifth round, a player who they think could make an impact. We'll see. I'm not, I'm not against the idea of taking an edge rusher early in the draft. By no means. If you can add a good pass rusher, go for it. But I think if you can really dominate the line of scrimmage, I think they have they have what it takes. They have what it takes so far um, at the edge rusher spots where they can get the job done and be fine. If you can really dominate the defensive line and have a rotation similar to what they had, uh, you know, years ago where they had a really strong rotation of defensive linemen subbing in and out. And like I said, potentially dominate the opposing team's offensive line. It makes it a lot easier for Zimenez and Carter and Adenabo. And if they add maybe a later round pick, uh, edge rushing piece to just kind of throw in there. Maybe there's another uh, training camp kind of signing that they add. A, a player like that that they add to their, to their uh, rotation. Who knows? I was really impressed with what they did last year. They just pieced it together. So if they can dominate on the defensive line, you had a player like Shelton, a nice run-stuffing defensive tackle, so you fill that need. Now you can go in the draft and really try and find a player with high upside and in terms of getting after the passer, even if that player is just a rotational piece. If his if his skill is, is oriented towards just getting after the passer, like I said, you really want to control the line of scrimmage, offensive line and defensive line. And I, and I think from there... You put yourself in a really good spot if you can do that.